So right now we're on 34th Street and Park Avenue. This is actually where I used to live. This was my second home here in New York City. I lived here with my sister, my brother, my friend Camilla, another Brazilian friend at some point. We all lived here together. We shared a room, bunk beds, all that kind of stuff. We just wanted to be in the city. So this is what it took. It's really crazy to be back here because I haven't like visited this building since I moved to LA, which has been four years now. So nostalgia going on. Oh my God, this used to be my gym the New York Sports Club. And actually, a funny story about this gym, I fell uh, running on the treadmill. <laughs> I tripped on my pants. Um, they were too long. Don't jog with pants on. Like, leggings is fine, but like mine were like open at the end. So I tripped and people just kept working out. Like, absolutely nothing happened. After that, I haven't been back on a treadmill ever since. <laughs> this is like where so many of my dreams came true. And I feel like when I was living in New York, every day felt like a dream. And I was still shocked, like two years in, I was like, oh my God, I live in the city of my dreams, you know? And it was just amazing. It doesn't feel like four years have passed. And a part of me also doesn't believe that I made the decision to leave because I love this place so much. Uh, so yeah, I feel, I feel good and really grateful, but I also feel like my journey here has not ended. Washington Square Park. It's been here since like the 1600s. What's most iconic about this place is the atmosphere. This neighborhood in general, it has a lot of art. It's a great place to connect and get a little bit out of your comfort zone. People are here to express themselves more than anything. Some of it won't make sense, but it's not supposed to because it's self-expression. Tell me, who are you guys? What's going on here? <laughs> We're the New York Initiative. We're a group of cyber heroes that do homeless outreach and violent crime de-escalation. De so you're like superheroes? Sure. Some people call us that, yeah. And what is that weapon? Are you guys like really oh, ready for... Actually, aren't. Yeah, they look like it, but they look just like... light sticks. So everybody, like, they see you, they get scared, but you're actually the nice yeah, guys. Yeah, like... I, this I, team was started 12 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So there's more of you. Yes. Yeah. But do you do like mm, a big man voice like when you see someone uh, like to scare no, them I'll away? I'll do a really funny one usually. Yeah? yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Humor is what calms stuff down most of the time. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what what would voice would you use for example? Well, well a really good one uh, often to do is usually like um, uh, SpongeBob. <laughs> so SpongeBob gets all the guns down. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like what? Yo, I love SpongeBob. SpongeBob's great. But our practice remains the same. We're always alert. We're always looking out for people. We're always helping people. Well, I appreciate you guys doing this. It's a really awesome initiative. For and sure. We I appreciate did... you. Thank you. I did hear that the city like started getting more dangerous after the pandemic yeah. and stuff. So mm -hmm. I've been a lot more careful with my belongings as well. So knowing that you guys are out here, that's really cool. I've never seen something like this before. Uh, so yeah. appreciate your service. Really appreciate. Andrea and I'm here with uh, 305 Fitness. We are a dance cardio fitness studio in the city. We have five locations. We actually have a location down the street here in West Village. Uh, we're here today with the fabulous instructor Courtney BD and this is a little pop-up just to give a little taste of how 305 Fitness is. We're dance cardio fitness. We also have a live DJ in studio and light show so it feels like you're dancing in a Miami club but you're sweating it all out. Us at 305fitness.com. Check out our schedule and our times. That was crazy. That was so much fun. The headphones are so loud, so you can't hear anything that's happening, and you can hear everything the instructor is saying because he has like a microphone. <laughs> I would totally do this again. This would make me excited to work out. This reminds me how amazing New York City is. You see, guys, it's a no brainer. I think now it's time to go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn Bridge and then we'll catch the sunset. So let's go, let's go. <laughs> We're here at the Brooklyn Bridge, one of the most photographed bridges in the United States, if not the most photographed bridge. It is beautiful, amazing architecture, and it's taking us from lower Manhattan into Dumbo in Brooklyn. Brooklyn Bridge was the first bridge to be built with stainless steel. 
It was inaugurated in 1883. And at that time, Brooklyn and Manhattan were separate. So Manhattan was a part of New York City and Brooklyn was its own city. In the 1900s, everything got merged together. Somehow it's all just connected. You know, all the people in New York. Just like in Washington Square Park, where we were earlier today, where everyone's just mingling, you know? It's a community. You're not just like doing your own thing. People are interacting and engaging. And that's what makes New York so amazing. It doesn't matter where you're from, everybody can find something in common. One World Trade Center right there. Always look back. Little cameraman side note. These guys are uh, flying on uh, tours. And so you can hire a helicopter to go take you on this amazing helicopter tour of the city. They take you around up there. Uh, they take you over the Brooklyn Bridge, obviously. Uh, and uh, some really cool spots also around the Statue of Liberty, which is a really cool spot. Ooh! How much do you think it is to go on a ride on these helicopters? It's about uh, $500 during midday for two people. It's about a grand for three people around sunset. It's cheaper to go on a round trip New York City, LA than to take a 30 minute ride on this helicopter. Oh, absolutely. Whoa! Okay, so I'm here on the History Channel's website, and they're saying here that the person who designed the Brooklyn Bridge was a guy from Germany. At least two dozen people died, including the original designer. The dude died <laughs> making this bridge. Now I'm wondering at what point, because I really hope he got to see the final product. Just before they started construction in 1869, he was fatally injured while taking a final compass reading across the East River, which is where the Brooklyn Bridge is located. A boat smashed the toes of one of his feet, and three weeks later, he died of tetanus. What? <laughs> so he didn't even fall off construction. He died before construction. Okay, that's just, that's just mean. Oh, but then what happened is his 32-year-old son took over the construction. Oh, a little family legacy. Yeah. All right, um, how about we forget about this tragic story for a second and take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel, huh? Was that a good icebreaker? All right, moving on. New York is living proof that a city is as great as its people. Here, you will find so much culture, creativity, and diversity. People aren't afraid to be who they are, and they feed into each other by simply being themselves. I'm extremely grateful for even being able to experience a day in this incredible place. Remember to check out my other vlogs about this transformative trip to New York City and like and subscribe for more content about culture and getting out of your comfort zone. I'm Carolina Risotto and I will see you next Wednesday.